that you be lifted high we ask tonight that your glory will fill this place and we ask tonight that you be enthroned in our lives i pray that you bless your people scattered all around this place and across different nations of the world different parts of this nation bless lift equip build let there be healings let there be deliverances i pray oh god that your people will experience the fullness of your power in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you you're very welcome please be seated i want us in one minute to just appreciate all those following us online they may not be able to see us but they can hear our clap thank you thank you so much let's honor them thanks to the power of technology hallelujah praise the lord tonight i want your spirit to be very sensitive i want to it's a prayer meeting we're going to pray tonight but I want to share with you a few things that I consider will truly, truly empower us. You know, I, I sat back and I was thinking today, just thinking of the, the topics, the teachings that God has brought from this place to the body of Christ, especially to us here different aspects of the life of the kingdom from prayer to excellence to success to spirituality to warfare to finances to family life the lord has been lavish granting us access to deep secrets the mysteries of the kingdom i was teaching the school of ministry students and um, i taught them something that i think is is, is good for us to know i said um, Every true apostolic ministry must be able to communicate a dimension of the revelation of God to a generation. In every dispensation, there is a dimension of the dealings of God that He apportions for that generation to know about Him. And it is part of the apostolic ministry to be able to capture that dimension of the understanding of God that he has a portion for a people and to be able to accurately teach God's people so that they having that understanding will come into that experience praise the Lord and um, honestly God has been faithful to us granting us access every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies I look at the lives of so many people here and looking at the things that God has done what God is doing I get text messages every day from people across several parts of this nation around the world just communicating their gratitude for what the teachings the meetings have done and for me I am deeply deeply humbled and tonight he will show us that path again never be tired of learning the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets of God the mysteries of the kingdom are how men rise that's how men become powerful in this system hallelujah Paul said I went up by revelation not by desire I went up by revelation so when you access the truths of the kingdom they have a way of making you powerful it is God's design that in every territory scattered across the earth there will be men and women who have paid the price to be his image bearers in reality that at every given point of our lives and our environment that he must find an envoy somebody that can allow the multifaceted possibilities of God to find expression within a given territory the kingdom only comes when God is able to find sufficient men who have aligned themselves sufficiently to his purposes through knowledge and obedience when you can find a man who has paid that price of alignment 
then you see the beauty of the power and the glory of God displayed within a territory. The revelation of God that is seen in a territory is not all that God is. It is the limitation that the aligned vessels have provided. He will have to work with the vessels that are available at any given time. Are we together now? So God can step into a place like Zaria and never be able to manifest his healing dimension. Never be able to manifest himself as a deliverer. That does not mean he cannot heal. It doesn't mean he cannot deliver. But the level of alignment it takes for a vessel to allow him release that possibility, he cannot find it. So he will have to make do with what is available. But happy and blessed is any man who pays the price of alignment to be able to be an effective host of God's glory, allowing every dimension of God that he desires to find expression, to find expression. And this personally is the theme for my life, that there will be nothing God seeks to do in a territory that he would not be able to do just because I am not aligned enough. And so we continue to press daily we press through knowledge we press through desire we take advantage of his grace and mercy it's like a ladder we keep climbing and we are being transformed we are being enlarged our capacities are we experience that expansion in the spirit and we are able to host more of him then you find out that your life becomes an effulgence of a sign and a wonder the reality of that immortal dimension of the workings of God in your life starts becoming glaring. It becomes clear to people that this is not a normal human being. And they are not lying. Because divinity is swallowing you up gradually. And you are beginning to manifest possibilities of someone who is obviously under the influence of a spirit. Like you see someone manifesting under the anointing. Ordinarily, you don't have the capacity to move in that kind of speed. When you see someone manifesting unusual strength, you know that that is another agency through him. Every time you align in the spirit, you help to advance the purposes of God. Let me tell you something. God is searching for men. He still is searching for men. Never should we wallow in that deception that because there are many churches, there are many programs happening, it means that God is finding a people. No. Alignment is not something that um, is a costly exercise. It's a costly sacrifice. Alignment is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Because it will require pruning. It will require death. It will require discipline. It will require commitment. It will cost you your tears. It will cost you your appetites. But the end thereof is glory. So the Bible says that I reckon that the sufferings of this present time right Romans 8 and verse 18 I reckon I come to terms with the fact that the sufferings the constraints of this present time you are on your way to becoming something there is a revelation in the heart of the father that you should become and he says on your way to becoming that thing there will be constraints you will cry it will cost you are we together now obedience is costly very costly and so it will constrain you and when that happens he says why well, reckon that the sufferings of this present time he gives you hope he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you when you watch a woman pregnant the constraints she may have to spit when she doesn't have to spit she may have to go through all kinds of constraints but give her nine months in that condition the moment she gives birth to a child she becomes an object of celebration people come around to look at the miracle of another life through a woman that's how people will gather around your life one day and wonder the level of alignment it would take to manifest the kind of anointing and glory that you're manifesting listen let me tell you something spending time in the presence of God has value 
in every wise it has monetary value it has influence value it has time redemption value there is no time spent in the presence of God that is a waste away with that religious proposition that people bring that when you wait in God's presence you are busy people stay in God's presence and they are looking at their watches as though they have something to do most of the things we seek can only be found in his presence only be found in his presence it pays to wait and while we wait it pays to hear him because for every time he speaks he redeems your future for every time he speaks he grants you access to rise that ladder of power that ladder of grace hallelujah it says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge not just through your desire grace unction we want power we want to see the glory of God the effulgence of his person only a lazy and unserious student will attend lectures for four weeks and say I'm tired no you continue why because there is a goal you know that one day you aim for something and so like a man who wants to win the Olympic you press you press there are times that you will have to go for the lectures in the rain but you overlook the inconveniences of the moment are we together I want you to pray in one minute and cry and say Lord I'm here again continue the training continue the dealing make me wiser make me better let me encounter another dimension of your anointing another dimension of your glory spirit of the living God I have come tonight to align myself the more this is the school of the spirit I have come make me powerful open my eyes activate my senses in the spirit place something upon my life that my generation will live to celebrate let me not pass as an ordinary person let the deposit of eternity be upon me hmm. do something in my life that will cost me it will it will last me my lifetime I have come to eat of the bread of the spirit this is Bethel the place where the Spirit of God will grant you fresh manna fresh manna fresh manna he told the prophet eat for the journey is far you will need that mystery you will need that revelation the fierceness of life will not allow you to learn in the face of battle you will need to be prepared the fierceness of life will not allow you to be searching for mysteries when the trouble comes you must be equipped so that before it comes you know what to apply that you have capacity to read the writings on the wall and know what to do and what to say he said Jesus himself knew what to do hallelujah please sit down Thank you very much for listening to this powerful sermon. We hope you were blessed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to listen to Apostle Joshua Selman's messages, Apostle Arome Osai's messages, Archbishop Benson Dahosa, and Apostle Shubi Oluwatsubilola's sermon. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs>